So let's go ahead and send this guy to an open formation here. And that's kind of the AI's idea of a tactical formation. He should really be about 10 miles out, but he's going to go about three. I'm going to leave the formation lights on, turn down the position lights, and uh, we'll go ahead and set our dispenser to bypass because I like the manual countermeasure control. We'll set up our SA page. Very good. We'll set the bingo here. 2200 seems fine and we'll go ahead and grab air to ground mode select our harms pull up the EW screen and we are ready to take out these SAM sites now these SAM sites are going to be important to knock out because if we don't take them out we're going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble when those MIGs show up um, if we get intercepted by MIGs and I can't fight three MIGs with sparrows and also you know, dodge SAMs. And I got the fuel tank ready to drop there if necessary. I'm gonna try not to drop that throughout the mission because it's kind of expensive and I wanna take it back if possible. I don't think we'll struggle that much with these MIGs, so we'll see. Turn on the HMD and we're ready to go. Our wingman has fallen behind a little bit. Okay, so we're closing in to the ring here, the SAM engagement range. Enfield 1-1, one, one. Overlord 1-1, one, one. Bra 0-1-3-4-80 at 35,000 knots. 
And we got three MiG-29s behind the SAMs. And I still don't have the SAMs on my EW screen, so I can't fire harms at them just yet. Okay, we got the SAMs, the search radars here. Go ahead and select that, and we're ready to Magnum. Those MiGs are getting kind of close too. Let's go ahead and send this off. Magnum. Wait a couple seconds, reselect the uh, SA-6 search site there, search radar, and give it a couple seconds. And Magnum again. All right. Okay, so now it's time to deal with those MIGs. Alright, they're at 35,000 hot. So we'll go ahead and deal, lock up this first guy. And we'll tell our wingman to engage that SAM site as well because he's carrying two harms. Just go ahead and center this guy up first. Alright, let's go ahead and send the wingman. All right, I'll occupy these MIGs while he does that. Even though I'm pretty sure those SAM sites are out because they're not shooting at me. The MiG-29 has fired. So we're going to go ahead and defend. He fired at like 20 miles, so that's pretty far. I'm going to go ahead and crank it out. I'm not too worried about this missile. It was fired from a very far range. I'm going to push him up close to the gimbal limit of my radar. Tell the wingman to engage the bandits. Because I'm going to need help to do this. Okay, we are at 12 miles. 11 miles, 10 miles, Fox 1. That looks like it's tracking well. Continuing to crank to beat his missile. Come on. Splash one. Alright. Alright, that's one of them. Still have two more MIGs. Go ahead and lock up the left MIG, which is the closest MIG. Okay. Alright, he's 12 miles, 11 miles, 10 miles, 9 miles, he has foxed, fox 1 from us, I was on Amram's there, I switched over to Sparrows in the last second, there's a fox 1 out, you can see his missile launch and his wingman has missile launched as well, there we go, splash 1.
All right, now to deal with the third Meg. Unfortunately, I've lost him. My SA is completely broken right now. I have no idea where he is. He's behind me somewhere. He's on my five o'clock somewhere. I don't see him. This concerns me greatly. For five, that's very dangerous. Something just exploded behind me. Some flares out, just to be sure. I see a missile launch, but I can't tell what it is. It's friendly or what. Okay, we have a missile launch. And there's two missile launches, I still can't tell. I can't tell who's who. And I don't see anybody either. I'm kind of concerned for my wingman here. Okay, we got another missile launch. Somebody's down low here. Okay, there's something that looks like my wingman. And there's another MiG right there. There's another. That's the MiG right behind my wingman. Fox 2. Okay, we gotta go for guns. Before he kills my wingman. There we go, splash one. Okay, that's all three megs. Two sparrow kills, one gun kill. And my wingman's still alive, so. Pretty sure I did all the work there. <laughs> Even though he was the escort aircraft, but I guess he kept them busy, so gotta give him credit. Alright, we're right over the ground target objective here. We'll level out, see if we can find the objective. Choose the Mark 84s, CCIP drop, nose fuse, and we're probably going to want it instantaneous. Alright, and I haven't dropped bombs in a very long time in the Hornet. Probably more than a year. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. The target is right there at that intersection where the cross is. Okay, and once again, right at that intersection there is the target. And we're going to go ahead and roll in. I'm trying to come in at a high angle because I think there's some AAA down there. It might be harder to hit at a steep angle for them to hit me. And we're going to pickle both of the bombs here. Yep, they're shooting. And pickle.
you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. It really helps me out when you do that. Big thank you to all of you who are already supporting the channel. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, guys, so we'll do a quick review here of the air-to-air -air engagement. Uh, we'll go ahead and fast forward. Those are the harm launches at the SAM sites. And right around here is where it kicks off. Okay, so I fired two harms at the SAM sites because these were going to be a problem for us. We couldn't really get into the engagement without taking these out because they would have obviously shot us down. It would have been too much to keep track of fighting three MIGs and SA2s and SA3 sites. And so we're going to fire two of those. Obviously those will hopefully impact. You can see that they actually fire two missiles just prior to the, the search radars being taken out. And number two, he's going to fire uh, a harm as well, but he's only going to get one off before I ask him to come after the bandits. You can see here we have uh, the lead MiG-29 has already fired an R-27R. The reason I didn't use the ER is because the Iraqis didn't have access to that during the Desert Storm operation, and we don't have AMRAMs. So we're using the Sparrows, and they're using R-27Rs. Now, upon those uh, search radars being knocked out, these two SAM missiles will just detonate. And so you can see what I'm doing here, having got the missile launch on me, is I'm cranking it out. Um, I did a right offset, and then I'm just going to crank it, kind of recommit onto the target here. And you can see at this point, he's probably committing onto the wingman. The wingman has also fired a, an AIM-7. Um, this missile already dead at Mach 0.77, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I'm gonna fire off my AIM-7 at a distance of probably about 10 miles. And you can see the wingman's also got his out approximately a few miles behind me. That missile's defeated. And so the two missiles are gonna come in. He's gonna drop his tank at the last moment and that's splash one. So you can see a simple crank to one side is literally enough to defeat the R27R. It's not a very dangerous missile at all. If you get too close to it, it definitely can be, but the range is very short. So we've taken out the two SAM sites so I can press in against the other two bandits here, and it looks like they're actually holding some sort of formation. That lead MiG-29, he was a little too aggressive. He got himself killed got himself into a two versus one scenario because he didn't stick with his buddies here. Uh, so this wingman is gonna fire his aim seven. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, that is so cool. Um, left and left shift and control will get you this interesting all right anyway so this guy's gonna fire at 18 miles that is way too far for a sparrow the sparrows were notoriously unreliable so i, I would never fire a sparrow from just under 20 miles that's ridiculous so i have pressed in about six miles and there's my launch. Now that may be too close. You know, I, I'd probably say something about 10 miles should be all right. And so I'm gonna drop that. I'm gonna drop chaff, even though I'm not in a beaming position. Uh, the chaff is mostly useless in this situation, but I drop it because I know these R27Rs are such garbage missiles that they might actually go for that ineffective chaff. And so here's um, the AIM-7 Sparrow. This guy's gonna break out. Look, he's gonna climb against the missile, which is a horrible idea. You should never climb against the missile. And he's gonna pay for that with his life. So he's dead. Um, his R-27R that was fired at my wingman is also not gonna be a threat. However, we do have an R-27R here by the third guy 
And quite frankly, I may be lucky that that didn't hit me. It does come pretty close. It's a good thing they're not very maneuverable, and you can tell it was also very low on energy by the time it reached me, so... It may have come close, but it was pretty much dead. Now, at this point, I don't have good SA. I'm not really too sure what's going on with this third guy. I kind of lost him on the radar. And so, naturally, what I'm going to do is start diving to the ground. I'm going to assume there was a missile fired at me. And quite honestly, I should have dropped flares, um, having lost visual on them. At least a couple. Um, however, I get lucky here, and as I dive away, I survived that. My wingman is going to keep him busy. I think he fired this aim 7 at him. Which, yeah, is going to keep him busy. Now, this MiG-29, I don't think he's committed onto me. He's going after my wingman. And here he goes firing an R-27R. Now, I saw this missile launch, and I saw this one. I wasn't sure which one was friendly, which one was... Hostile, so I didn't know which smoke trail to follow. Again, my uh, situational awareness completely ruined in this situation. So as I'm struggling to regain my SA, my wingman uh, dodges this R27R. Let's see how... So the reason he dodges it, the R27R is a Fox 1, and this guy fires it, but breaks off. You can see that missile is far outside the gimbal limit of that MiG-29, so that missile is now stupid. The uh, AIM-7 here also looks like it goes stupid. It goes for the chaff here that the MiG drops. So the MiG actually abandons this missile in um, a priority to save his life, essentially, and drops some chaff and defeats that AIM-7. Now, unlucky for the MiG, he is now sandwiched between two Hornets. And for some reason that I don't understand, my wingman jettisoned his fuel tank, but also an AIM-9, which would have been very useful in this situation. And so right here, and he dodges this R-60 just barely, goes for the flare. I'm dropping some flares because I'm just seeing missile launches everywhere. It's kind of freaking me out. So I'm dropping a couple flares just to be sure. Now in this situation, I commit onto my wingman because I think he's the hostile. But as I get a good look at him, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a hornet. But right as I realize that's a hornet, this other thing just shows up in front of me. I'm like, oh, that's a MiG-29. So then instantly I'm going to commit onto that MiG-29. He is in a good position to take out my wingman with an R-60. And so I quickly try to get an AIM-9 off at him, but it's just too close. And the Sidewinder can't achieve a lock, or a good track solution, I guess. Um, so I gotta go in for guns. Now at this point, my wingman is safe, and this MiG is completely defensive. And we're gonna put guns on him, and he's dead. Alright guys, so that's the air-to-air -air engagement there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you guys are having fun with your super carriers, those of you that decided to purchase it. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.